How do you create a million dollars in passive income? Well, we've been talking about passive income is income that is created from an asset rather than hours you've traded. So if you own an asset like a piece of real estate and that real estate creates a million dollars in rent checks, you've just made a million dollars. Now we've been talking about digital assets, being a digital landlord by creating things on the internet that you can sell over and over again. So I got this record up here, over here, and uh, we did the math on how to make a million dollars, right? We just take that million dollar mark, and we divide it by how many assets we have to sell. Now, a lot of people, they go out there and they create digital assets. And by the way, it's Christian, the Work From Anywhere guy. This is the third part or fourth part in the series, so be sure to go back and watch them all, but let's get into it. So a lot of people go out there and they sell a couple of their digital assets and then sales come grinding to a halt. And they think, oh, well, Facebook ads don't work anymore or YouTube ads don't work anymore or I just lost steam and people aren't buying anymore. But what happens is they had a small market digital asset. They had something only a few people want. We have to create what's called mass market digital assets, something that the masses, the majority of the market actually wants. Now, there's two ways that we do that. The first one is called lazy messaging. The second one is called just like me technique. So the first one is lazy messaging. Now, if you're out there and you're describing your hobby or the tool that you're recommending or what you do at work and you're trying to sell this as a digital asset to other people, if it confuses them, they're not gonna buy. There's a saying there's no such thing as a confused buyer. So if you speak in technical jargon of the market, then a certain amount of people will understand you and buy from you, and then you're gonna run out of people that understand you, and you're done. And a lot of people don't really get how important this is. So I sell a program, and we talk about Facebook advertising and funnels, which to most of the general population, that sounds like pure jargon right off the bat. Now, if you're in the field at all, you think, oh yeah, that's obvious, it makes sense. But I can tell you, it doesn't make sense to most people. But you know what does make sense to most people is sign spinners. If you walk out on the street and you see a guy spinning a sign and he's getting more customers to go into that coffee shop, most people have seen that in their life and they have the mental imagery to understand that. And so you tell them sign spinner, they get it. Now, if I say, what about an online sign spinner? We spin the sign online and we send customers to our client's business. Now, most people can understand that a lot better than Facebook ads and funnels, even though they refer to exactly the same thing. And so I call that lazy messaging, not because it's lazy on my part, because the customer can consume that in a lazy manner and they're gonna understand it. They don't have to work to try to understand what I'm saying to them. So people aren't bombarded with stimulus. You know, they're on Instagram, they're watching YouTube, they're watching Netflix, they're taking care of the kids, they're going to their job. If they have to work at all to understand your message, you've lost them, okay? So number one with our digital asset, when we sell it, we wanna use lazy messaging by simplifying our message into something that relates to something the customer already understands, and more importantly, they have a picture for it in their head already. So that's number one, lazy messaging. And number two is the just like me technique. Now, a lot of people think that the story you tell in your marketing is about you. If I tell a story about my life in this video or in my marketing, a lot of people would look at that and say, oh, he's telling stories about himself. But the story you tell in your marketing is actually about your customer. You're just giving them the opportunity to get a happy ending. So you're telling the beginning of their story and then you're finishing it for them by telling what happened in your life. And so I was part of this one group. There was, I think, 10,000 customers in this course and the founder got everybody to do a Myers-Briggs test, which if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a personality test. It's really popular. You can go take it at 16 personalities and you come out with a four letter personality. I think I'm an INFJ. And so the founder had everybody take this test, thousands and thousands of people, and it was something like 80 or 90% of people had the same personality that he had. Now this guy has 10,000 customers, right? He's absolutely crushing it, made tens of millions of dollars. And it turns out that like 80 or 90% of his customers have the exact same personality as he does. And so what I'm trying to get to you is the customers you attract are gonna be just like you. Culturally, their value system, uh, a lot of times, even what they look and sound like, you know, the way they speak, the cadence at which they speak, and that's because we just are hardwired to know, like, and trust people that are like us. We're tribal in nature, we're humans. And so you're gonna attract people to your program who believe in the same things you believe in, who value the same things you value, and who have been through the same experiences, especially the same difficult experiences that you have. And so you have to go back. I know it's corny in the marketing industry, but you have to go back and tell the beginning of your journey so that your customer can bond with you, relate to you, and they can actually make your story their story. 
And that's what's gonna make the difference between a mass market product. We could just say, here's our product, here's what it does. It teaches you snowboarding. But if I go back to the beginning and I say, I remember the day that I fell in love with snowboarding. And it's because this girl I had a crush on told one of my best friends that if he landed this trick off this jump, she was gonna give him a kiss. And so I'm just going back and I'm telling this kind of like vulnerable, kind of funny moment when I was a kid and I was learning to snowboard and something that was exciting about it for me. You know, but if somebody can relate to that experience, they're like a hundred times more likely to do business with me than the competitor just because they've related to me and they see themselves in me and they see the outcome that I've gotten with this product. And so if you can actually tell your story and be vulnerable in your marketing and you come up with a good story, you know, go back through your life, catalog the events that you've been through in relation to your digital asset and actually create a good compelling story where you had to overcome a struggle you're gonna attract people who are culturally like you are, who face the same struggles, and you can actually help them go through the same transformation that you've gone through. So those are the two ways that we break into the mass market, we call the middle of the market, and that's the biggest bulk of customers. It's by simplifying our messaging and creating lazy messaging, something that's easy to understand. It relates to something the customer already understands on a deep level. And two, we use the just like me technique where we actually let our story be the customer's story and we give them a happy ending. And then again, you know, this guy right here, I knew I had to get a thousand customers to hit the million dollar mark and get the record. So that's what I did. I counted it down backwards. You know, like I said, on the first day I had two sales, I said, okay, 998 to go. And I went after it. I simplified the messaging. I told my story. I focused deeply on creating a product that people love that solves a problem for them. And that's how I created my digital asset. Now I've done this over and over again. I've told my stories a million times in here with apps, with courses, with coaching, with services even, but we're talking about passive income today. Um, so go out there and tell your own story. And I would love to hear in the comments, you know, what, what out of the four passive income ideas we've been talking about, which if you're not sure what I'm saying, go back in this series, because this is the fourth video in the series, come up with your passive income idea and then let's build your story together. Now, tomorrow we're gonna to talk about how to actually do that and the tools that you need um, and what's gonna really needs to be in place to have this work for you. Because I love the phrase, do the thing and you shall have the power. So if you just look at people who have already succeeded before you and you do exactly what they've done with your own thing, then you will get the results that they've gotten. But if you haven't done what they've done, if you are wondering, why don't I have passive income, but you don't own any digital assets, you haven't created any digital assets, you're not a digital landlord, you know, then why would you expect to? You're still gonna have to go and trade hours for dollars. So tomorrow we're gonna talk about how to actually get that done piece by piece. So subscribe to the channel, hit notifications so you don't miss that. That one I don't know if we're gonna keep up forever. So just make sure you watch that video when it comes out. And let me know in the comments, what did you think of this? I would love to hear from you. That's all for today. It's Christian, the work from anywhere guy. See you on the next one.